And now for my recipe. This is a recipe for creating a sustainable, romantic, and intimate relationship. By sustainable, I mean over time, where both partners can have 100% of what they want in the relationship for as long as it is good for both partners. That's what I mean for by sustainable. So one, you start by combining the two major ingredients of a relationship, friendship and respect. Combine those together and you blend them with genuine caring and patience. Then you allow for multiple interactions and experiences to occur over time. It's kind of like letting the bread rise before you put it in the oven. And then you add closeness and emotional intimacy, those three qualities I talked about earlier. You spice it up with a little tender touch and little romance, maybe some flowers, some candy, some pretty gems. <laughs> and then you bond all the ingredients together with a personal commitment to each other. Warm it up with some sex and then top it off with life partnership planning that might even include a legal commitment. So that's my recipe for a long-term relationship. Note, this recipe usually fails if you try to warm it up with sex too early. Now I'd like to bring to your attention various levels of relationship. I learned this information in my coach training program. The lowest level of relationship is dependency. If we're dependent, this level of relationship is very typical with parent-child uh, situations, caring for an elderly person or parent where they're dependent on us, or when one partner cannot take care of him or herself. It doesn't usually work well for romantic or intimate relationships, but it is a kind of a relationship, and it does require, of course, communication and being able to express your needs and that sort of thing. But it's not really one that we would seek to have in a romantic situation. The next one is a codependent relationship. A lot of us have heard about codependency, usually associated with alcoholism or addiction. What, it, what codependency typically means is that our partner is dependent on a chemical and we're dependent on our partner. So we're codependent on that chemical, whether it's alcohol or drugs or whatever. That's what codependency means. Now in a relationship, it doesn't work really well. If one person is codependent and is very needy, always trying to do people pleasing, putting their own um, desires behind the desires of their partner. It really doesn't work very well. It can get very messy. In this situation, uh, the other mate and even offsprings from dependent, chemically dependent parents, they can develop all kinds of coping mechanisms. One of them is they can become very good manipulators. And manipulation can really mess up a relationship. If you've never been there, you can just take my word for it. What can happen oftentimes is when there's a codependent situation, if one person gets healthy, 
it usually destroys the relationship. So the act of getting healthy is very threatening to a relationship. So both people can just stay totally stuck. The next, and I'm not saying it's not a relationship that you couldn't have, you certainly could, but you may not get all the benefits of it that you would if you didn't have the codependency going on. The next level of relationship is independent. Now, sometimes guys will say, oh yeah, I really want an independent woman. I'm not sure they mean that, but an independent relationship is where both parties are looking out for themselves and they're not tying their decisions to the needs and desires of their partner. They're really acting pretty independent of their partner. Sometimes an independent partner will reach a point, and it could be very easily, where they say, I don't need this, I'm out of here. And they would choose to be independent rather than being in the relationship. So that one's not real workable. It can work for some people if they make ground rules <laughs> and establish the kind of relationship where both people can be independent. And then there's interdependent. Now, a lot of people think that this is the highest form of relationship. This is kind of that marriage kind of relationship where each partner depends on the other in an interdependent way. And they uh, have each other's back. Now, you know, that sounds very beautiful and it's a real workable relationship. But what can happen is patterns can develop where we assume we know what the other person's thinking and, and what the other person needs. And we just sort of get into these ruts. And spontaneity can suffer, romance can suffer, if we don't keep the spark alive. If we just get into this situation where we're so interdependent with each other that we're now functioning, but we're not really connecting, if that makes any sense. We can often read each other's minds in this relationship. We seem to think we know what they want, what they're thinking, and we don't oftentimes give them very much room to change. That's one of the challenges of an interdependent relationship. So the highest level of relationship in this scenario, this analysis, I'm not saying this is applicable to everybody, but the highest level in this explanation is interdevelopmental. And that means that both parties are responsible for their own lives, their own growth, and they grow together and they grow separately. So let me explain a little bit about how that works. An analogy would be two beautiful, healthy plants in a garden. Each plant is completely responsible for getting enough sunshine, for holding on to the raindrops when they come down with their leaves, for reaching their roots into the soil to get nutrients. Each plant is living on its own. It doesn't require the other plant to make sure that it survives or that it thrives. So with these two beautiful plants growing side by side, they're close to each other. They're sharing the same garden, the same soil, and they're both growing independently of each other but they're respecting the growth of their partner. And so we bring this back to human terms. What this means is that both people are responsible for their own lives. And they're both 100% responsible for the relationship. 
So they're committed to the relationship, they're committed to the other person, but they're not dependent on the other person for their survival. And each person gives the other person room to grow, room to experience, to explore, to change. If we can't do that in relationships, then we often rely on the interdependency. So what I'm suggesting here is if you are going to try to build a long-term sustainable relationship, look at ways that you can establish the groundwork, the foundation, the structure of the relationship so that neither party gets stifled in their growth. And one thing that we see in divorces is one person will grow, the other person doesn't, wants to cling to the way it's always been, and the relationship gets too much stress and ends up breaking. So I would suggest that we try to avoid that. If you're in a relationship and your partner is growing and changing and the ground is starting to shift a little bit, look at how you might be able to become more of your own person as well. That would be my recommendation. So each party can grow fully. So the five levels, dependent, codependent, independent, interdependent, and interdevelopmental. Thank you for listening and participating in this video. If you'd like to chat, here's my email address. Feel free to contact me. I'm here to provide support. And please like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. Blessings.